Hello, so today I'm going to do a video on this, my bill hook, and Richard Weaponsmith made this for me, who is here on YouTube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link to his channel in the description below, so if you click on that you can see the videos he's made, he's not done all that many videos at the moment, but I'm sure he'll be making more. And um, you can obviously even subscribe to him um, to give him more views. Um, or you could probably commission him to do something like he did this for me. So he's obviously getting into doing kind of forging and welding type stuff. So he's done me a bill hook. Now he did a demonstration video on this one as well to make sure I was happy with it before I bought it. But um, obviously I was because I'd commissioned it. So um, let's talk about it. So the bit he made me obviously is the head. He also included this rivet um, here for me. Um, I haven't been able to hammer that in totally properly because um, I don't have an anvil to do it on so when I tried to get a block of wood and hammer it into that it started mangling the wood because of you know the rivet is stronger than the wood. So let's talk about the bill hook itself and then I'll try and demonstrate and it'll probably demonstrate it very badly. So the bill hook is a English basically pole arm head um, or type of pole arm. Pole arm. So in its simplest form a bill hook is an aggregate agricultural tool. Um, I actually have a bill hook in the shed but I won't be able to get it out for this video today. But what the bill hook basically is, is um, if you look at this section of the bill um, and you basically take it down to about here and remove that back spike, it's basically a bladed part here. And it's kind of a bit like a sickle or a machete. You use it normally for chopping branches or pruning trees, that kind of thing. Um, but they were developed into a military tool during the medieval period um, in the use of a pole arm similar to a halberd. So this is very similar to a halberd, a bill hook. Now if I just pan the camera up slightly you might be able to see more of the bill hook in frame because obviously the spike's quite long on it. You've got your sort of chopping blade here. This is the bit that's brought down upon somebody. Um, you've got your reverse spike or beak, whatever you want to call it which is similar to a halberd's one, it's used for pulling riders from the harness, um, you know, from the saddle, um, or it's used for bringing down with a lot of force to puncture armour. Then at the top, you've got the spike, uh, so it can be used like a spear, because pole arms primarily, you know, evolved from spears. They normally always kept the stabbing point, because that was one of the primary points of a um, pole arm, was to obviously be able to um, use them for thrusting and cutting, or whatever, or crushing. So, this um, is obviously a bill hook. It's a very good replica of what a bill hook actually would be like. There are surviving bill hooks in museums, um, but a big point to you know point out is that with things like bill hooks and similar tools, um, there was no standardisation because during the medieval period, weirdly, there were not modern factories. So lots and lots of well, this goes for swords, armour, you know, any kind of arms really. There was not. Um, like a really good standard on what things look like. Even the same blacksmith making them could do several, you know, variations of things. But you get some people online like, oh, that's not a bell hook because it's shaped like this, or it's not a bell hook because it's shaped like that, you know, that kind of thing. Um, where really, as long as it, it's close enough, that's, you know, good enough. You could look at 20 different examples of a bill hook, all of them considered bill hooks, and none of them would look identical because each would sometimes have a bigger or smaller cutting blade, a bigger or smaller spike. This, you know, reverse spike could be a bit further up or lower down, you know, or angled slightly differently. So to complain about, you know, bill hooks and all that sort of things like that is silly, so I'm very happy of this. Now, what Richard did for me, which was really useful, is he did it with a socket rather than langlets because when I did the halberd and I assembled that, um, he obviously didn't make that halberd, but that was like a factory made one. Um, the problem with the halberd head is it had the langlets on, which were a real pain to shave the um, pole down enough to get it to fit properly. So what Richard did for me is he said if he made it 35mm I should be able to get broom, uh, hand, not broom handles, but you know like um, rake handles, hoe handles, that kind of thing, tool handles, that were about 35mm. And when he did it it ended up being 34.5mm I believe inside. I had ordered a 35mm pole by I think 1.5m pole it might have been, I can't remember now. Um, and it actually really snugly fit, I didn't even have to shave any wood down which was brilliant. Um, and then I obviously drilled through, put the uh, rivet through and it's through securely enough until I get an anvil or something really hard to hit it on to mushroom it out. Um, so that's all good. So the pole is just simply a pole bought from Amazon, um, you know like a tool handle pole and typically like this seems to always be the case, it's not totally straight, which always annoys me of these poles. But, you know, they always seem to be slightly bent. 
So I've put the bill hook on the straighter edge so it means the slightly bent one I can have my right hand hand on the back so I can thrust more accurately with it because like with most pole arms obviously you primarily use it for thrusting. So what I'm going to do now, if I can without you know messing it up really badly, I'm going to take this out into the garden and I've got a bit of cardboard box left over, like one of the really strong rigid shipping cardboard boxes, not like a flimsy cardboard box, and I'll thrust through it a couple of times and hit it. Now, I know this bill hook is certainly built to a very good standard um, and everything, so any stuff where it doesn't work properly will be me, not the bill hook. Um, another thing to point out is Richard, because he obviously knows what he did, was doing, um, did this using two kinds of carbon steels. One that's better for the spike, one that won't stay sharp, but it's very good for a thrusting spike, because again, a spike doesn't need to be sharp, it's a thrusting tool, not a cutting tool and a different kind of carbon steel for this edge. One better at keeping an edge, that's obviously been used on the bladed edge. One that's better for thrusting and not breaking, that's been used on there. Um, and as you can see, you've done very solid welds to get those parts onto there. So anyway, let's um, go and test it. better for that won't stay sharp thrusting spike because again a thrusting tool not a cut a different kind of hub one better at keeping been used on the blade one that's better for uh, uh. thrusting tool not a cut and a different kind of carb Better for thrusting tool, not cutting. Okay, so what did those tests show us? Well, basically it thrusts through absolutely fine as you'd expect. Um, annoyingly, sometimes that's hard to show on camera because what annoys me with those big cardboard boxes is as tough as they are, generally they're not very stable. So unlike hitting a proper, you know, hard target, what happens with these is you hit them and then they fall over straight away even if you don't transfer much force into them. And because they fall over so easily, it means you can't transfer as much force into them. Because if you hit them and they start falling the immediate, you know, as immediately as the blade comes in or the spike goes in, um, you're going to do less damage than something that actually stands up and resists it. Again, you can put weights at the bottom of those boxes, but sometimes they still crumple like out of the way of a hit rather than you know taking the full force of it. But thrusting through, obviously, using your right hand at the back of the pole, um, left hand on it, you kind of snook a cue as you push it forwards using a bit of body movement as well go through absolutely fine as you'd expect, pretty much all pole arms do. Um, you know, any sort of spike, spear, halberd, uh, you know, bill hook, any of those spikes on those, they're going to go through a target very easily. So that worked well. Um, with the main bladed bit, that worked well as well, but what you saw happen is, as I said, because the cardboard isn't all that strong, well, it's very strong corrugated kind of shipping cardboard, but it's not actually, um, you know, it's still cardboard. What you saw of that is the blade actually made quite a big cut into the actual, um, from a downward swing, the blade made a very big cut into the um, cardboard. A sideways swing might work better to demonstrate that blade, but unfortunately not where I was doing it, because there's not the space you have to basically thrust or do overhead swings. Um, what we saw there is the cardboard crumpled, but where the blade actually connected with the cardboard, that sliced down that quite easily. How visible this will be in the footage, I don't know, because annoyingly, um, the camera is designed to be widescreen, but you don't get much vertical height because it's widescreen on this camera. So what that meant, obviously, is that you can't see the bottom of the top of stuff as well as, you know, and I'm not going to film it at a stupid sideways angle, um, but that's a bit of a problem. But regardless, um, the blade from the bill hook went in, cut down properly, um, but then again the cardboard crumpled quite a lot as well and sort of crumpled the cardboard out of the way of the blade. Um, when I used the spike, um, you know, like the reverse spike and did a downwards, you know, hit with that, as you would if you were trying to puncture a breastplate or a helmet. Um, what that did is, interestingly, obviously, the that bit that punctured it went in no problem, as you'd expect. It's a spike into cardboard. 
However, the interesting thing is the cardboard, crum cardboard crumpled so entirely on that one that you can actually probably hear in the footage the bill hook hit the concrete floor. No damage to the bill hook, Richard's done a really good job, you know, welding that together. Um, so nothing snapped off or dented or bent or anything like that, you know. I didn't even feel that much shock through the pole of the bill hook hitting the floor, so that's good. But yeah, so obviously the cardboard got crushed so entirely that on the downward swing, the cardboard crushed out the way and obviously the bill hook hit the floor. So yeah, it seems to handle very well. When I've got the time and money and everything else, what I will do at some point to demonstrate it a bit more efficiently is hopefully in the middle of the garden where I've got more, a lot more room to swing it around, get some more, I can't really get pumpkins at this time of year now. But you know, something like that where um, something that's a bit more, you know, can smash it up a bit better. Because I'm sure you've seen from videos, there's some videos where I can swing the sword into a pumpkin and you get some really good brutal results of the pumpkin getting, you know, sliced apart and things like that. You do the same thing with swords on cardboard boxes, even when they're the tough boxes, and it looks a bit underwhelming because it cuts a bit and the cardboard crumples. So, you know, that's why it's actually better to demonstrate on kind of fleshy uh, fruits and vegetables rather than, you know, or chunk of meat rather than actually demonstrating it on cardboard, but sadly at the moment cardboard's all I've got, um, I don't think there's even any milk bottles that are empty as of the time I tried to film this video unfortunately, they've all been thrown out in an outside dustbin somewhere. Um, so you know, there's that. Um, what I might do at some point is demonstrate the bill hook against the Kevlar um, and chainmail, sort of one of the vest inserts I've used, because if you saw on my halberd video, that halberd never went through it, um, but the bill hook might. I know Rich has done a video where he demonstrated a bill hook and I think two other things against a stab proof vest. I think the bill hook was the only one on that that didn't go through. But a actual, um, the Auschwitz or whatever it's called, the um, type of armour penetrating spear, kind of lance type thing. And I think the wing spear he did both did go through. But again, it might depend on this bill hook because it was a different bill hook he demonstrated that video, so we'll see. Um, and I think he was demonstrating the thrusting point, not the, you know, like, armour-piercing beak. So, that will be interesting to see. But yeah, very happy with it, so please do check Richard out. Um, as I said, in the description below, I will have a URL of his channel. So, I think he wants to get into doing more commissions for people. Um, like I said, I'm very happy with the one he's did, um, he did. It cost me £50 for the um, head plus shipping. And, and well, sorry, shipping was included, so... For £50 I got the head and the postage, but I don't know if he'd do those prices for everybody or whatever. Um, the pole I bought from Amazon, and that was £10, so basically it was about £60 in total, give or take maybe a pound or a few pence for the whole price from Amazon. But um, yeah, so very simple at least for me to put together, because it was on the 35mm socket. It meant I could literally, as I said, shove the um, bill hook head onto the pole, then just drill through it, then just put the rivet in. And the rivet was the most difficult bit for me because I don't have an anvil to hammer it through on. But regardless, it's all together compared to the hours and hours and hours it took to put that halberd head on the pole. And this looks a lot better on the pole than the halberd head did because, you know, it fits properly of the pole. It's not, you know, cut a bit too much here and not so much in other places. So that's all good. So very happy of the bill hook. As I said, I like the history of bill hooks and everything like that. They're really interesting pole arms. And hopefully at some point I can demonstrate it a bit more efficiently, you know, more space and some of the manoeuvres with it. But I'm really happy with it anyway. That's the point I want to get across, that I am happy with it. Um, you know, I paid for it, I'm happy with it. Please check Richard's channel out, even if you're not interested in commissioning anything. It's quite interesting seeing some of his bow videos and, you know, other things he's smithed together. Um, so yeah, please check out his videos. As I said, the link will be down below in the description. And, you know, thanks for watching.